Okay, so after you've covered it in a slab, that's when you can start really doing your designs, okay? I've got newspaper underneath, Miss Green's example, she has cardboard underneath, something to make cleanup easier and to make the clay not stick to your table. You also want to make sure that you can kind of peel off from the foil. You don't want to press into it too hard. So mine is really pressed into it right now. Remember the foil's more there just to support it. Hey, we all, we all learn. It's okay. Okay. And when it dries, it'll pop off a little bit easier. It's a little sticky. But yeah. Okay. So once you've got it all covered, and you know, she has hers going around. It's okay if you don't take the foil off um, at the end, I guess. I'll hope that it won't dry and contract too much and crack. Once you're start ready to start adding designs, you can just rip off a piece of your clay and you can start coiling. Again, a lot of these techniques you learned with Play-Doh. So you can make a coil by moving your hand across. Again, it's a good idea to do it on newspaper or some other surface so that it doesn't stick to your countertop. Okay, and if we were using real clay instead of air dry clay, um, there'd be some attachment methods we'd have to use, but with these, you can kind of use, you can just stick it on there and kind of press it down onto it. Okay, and it, it will stick. And then if you want to as well, you can kind of push it in using a tool like the knife or your finger. And instead of it being a coil now, it kind of looks more like part of the, the face, right? It has a ridge there, but it looks like it's connected rather than just being resting on top. Either one's fine, and you can mix it up and do different things. Just is a different look. So this looks more like a protrusion that's part of, like the bones underneath his eyebrow ridge or something. Right, and you can kind of pinch it. And that's, you could do that with the clay that's already there, but this prevents it from getting too thin, right? We're kind of sculpting it around. So now it feels more like a protrusion coming out of the, and whereas here it feels just like an attachment. Either one's fine, it just depends on what you're going for. You can see the difference there. Um, make another one. Make another one inside of it. Let's see what that does. If you have any tiny spoons at home, this could work well with that. You can smooth it out and then it has like a double ridge now. This just makes it a lot more interesting than, yeah, you can kind of push down and build up. 
It makes it more interesting than just incising lines, just drawing lines into it. We're sculptors, right? We took 3D art, so we're not just going to draw lines into it. We're going to have lines that come up, lines that sink in. That creates interest. Right? It makes it more interesting. Kind of creates like an eye socket there instead of just, again, just linear design. It still has a linear feel to it while being 3D. Has anyone tried smoothing this kind of clay out with a little bit of water on their finger? I haven't tried that. I don't know if it'll work. Now it's kind of like an eye socket rather than just being stuck on there. And it looks more interesting from the profile, too, because of these bumps. Okay, so that's just an idea. Attaching coils to create ridges and relief on your mask.